Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Patricia Coughlin. I've been away for a couple weeks. I was over in Europe, had a wonderful time. And uh, now I'm back to talk about the all-important phase of defense work. Uh, this is so crucial, and yet it's often given short shrift. It seems as if therapists are so anxious, you know, to get to feelings and uh, just to get moving that they do it prematurely. And I'm finding, you know, 20, 25 sessions in, you know, the patient is still using a lot of defenses. And so the therapist hasn't done this phase of defense work thoroughly, where the patient is well acquainted with their defenses. They understand how their defenses are creating and perpetuating their suffering, and they're actually willing to relinquish them in favor of having a really honest look at what they're feeling and what's going on in their life. So how do we actually do this all important defense work? Well, Davin Lou was very uh, systematic actually in his work, and he also provided us with really operational definitions of each phase of therapy. And so for the defense phase, he enumerated three steps. I have added a fourth. The first step is, so before I go into that, in order to do effective defense work, you have to be in specific situations and you have to be somewhere on the triangle of person. So we're looking at symptom generating situations. Let's say the person uh, you know, had a panic attack the previous week. When was that? What was happening? Turns out there was an interaction with the boss. Okay, so we're in a specific situation with the boss in the current. We are going to ask what kinds of feelings, so you got all anxious, had a panic attack, ran out of the room, but let's look at what kinds of feelings you were having towards your boss. In almost all cases, the patient is going to give you a defense. I thought he was really unfair. Okay, so the steps. Number one, you have to identify the defense. So I asked you about a feeling, and you're giving me kind of a thought or an opinion about your boss. Okay, so number one, identify the defense. Two, clarify it. Right, so what's the function of that? I wonder if going to your head, judging, is actually a way to avoid your feeling toward him. So do they get it? Number one, right? Can they tell the difference between a feeling and a thought? And if they do, do they see that going to their thought is a way to avoid their feeling, right? So it's every step along the way. Then number three is, what's the cost of that? So when you do that, right, when you detach from your feelings, you go to your thoughts, you make up this big story about it, you know, what ends up happening? Oh yeah, I get more and more anxious, more and more upset, right? So that's a vital, vital um, step, right? Is not only that they see that they defend, but that doing so, again, creates and exacerbates their presenting problems. It is only once the patient sees that clearly that they are in a position to make that fourth move, which is to have a choice. So do you want to continue in that way? Do you want to continue to be detached, to stay in your head, to ruminate, right? Or do you want to allow yourself to really get to know and experience the feelings that you're having toward him? Okay, so these are the steps. Identify, clarify the function, look at the cost of the defense, and then once the patient is clear on that, put them at choice. So this might sound like it's pretty simple, but in some cases, it can take many, many, many rounds to really acquaint the patient with their defenses. Many patients conflate their feeling with their defenses. So they think their defense is their feeling. So if you have an intellectualizer, 
I'm remembering uh, one young woman who, you know, was a brilliant person, went to the best universities, and really, really lived in her head. And she really thought that all of her thoughts and opinions about were her feelings, right? And when I kept saying, well, that's your thought. I mean, that's an opinion. That's a judgment. But what about your feeling? Suddenly she went, you mean that thought isn't my feeling? I thought that what? Uh, yeah, I always thought I was in touch with my feelings, but now I see I'm not at all, right? Really, really important awareness and insight for her. And that took some doing, right? From one situation to another, right? To see how detached she was from her feeling, how much she was living in her head. Another one that can be very difficult is when patients actually act out and discharge. So they think that screaming, yelling, throwing things is their anger, right? And it's, of course, nothing of the kind. It's a way to avoid it. You know, patients often either want to spit out to get rid of that feeling or they internalize it, attack the self, get depressed. So I remember there was one case in which this man was just couldn't distinguish, right, between the, the feeling of anger and him acting on it. And so as I was trying to point this out to him, and we were doing various examples, he started to get angry and frustrated with me. So he started to yell and swear. And so I said, you know, let's just take a pause here and check. What are you feeling? Are you actually feeling anger in your body? And he was so surprised. He went, well, actually, hmm, no. So it was only in that experience in the moment that he could see that screaming, swearing, was a way to get rid of that anger, and then he wasn't in touch with it at all, right? So this is a, a you know a complex but really important phase of the work, and we're probably going to you know use several uh, videos to really explore it. But let's just start there with helping to in very specific situations with somebody on the triangle of person that you're helping the person see, you're gonna ask about the feeling toward them, and you're gonna help them see that they're doing things, defending we would say, but where they're doing things to avoid that feeling and that that causes their presenting problems, all right? And don't move on until they really see it. And there are some cardinal signs that the person is really starting to turn on those feelings. They will start to themselves say, oh my gosh, that's what happened last night with my husband, right? I mean, I, actually, I was furious, but I, you know, I ended up crying and uh, getting all depressed, right? So, so they'll spontaneously give new examples, right? Or they'll get really sad about the cost of these defenses, so um, we'll talk more about that the next time, and we'll continue in this, um, on this subject of really uh, doing good and thorough defense work. Hope this is helpful, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.